Hi everyone, uh, my name is Amy. Um, so after uh, two, what feels like two solid days of moving really heavy things, I finally got my Bridgeport mill um, moved and set up in my shop at home. Uh, so what better way to welcome it home than to do a little project. So what I decided to make is a small roundover plane, um, a wood plane for putting a small round edge uh, really easily. Um, something that I've been basically doing with a regular plane and then a lot of sanding. So this should make that a lot faster. Uh, so the first step here, of course, since I'm starting with a piece of scrap aluminum, is to just square up all the faces. Uh, next, I put a vice stop in um, and then use an edge finder to find all the edges. Now, what I'm using here is a bridge port with a Proto Track Plus unit. Um, so that is a DRO, but um, the setup also has stepper motors on the X and the Y axis, which uh, allows me to um, do pretty simple um, CNC canned programs, um, such as circle pockets like it's doing here. Uh, I it doesn't do like a spiral downward, um, just really simple since I don't have any motor on the Z. Um, so all of the depths um, I'm just doing manually with the quill. The next step here is to cut the throat of the plane. Um, since the body is metal, uh, I think that even though there's basically a giant notch in the body of this plane, um, I think that structurally it should be stiff enough. Um, for the next step, I made this really simple angled block. Uh, the angle here, I'm making the slot for holding the blade, and the actual angle um, isn't super critical. So that's why I feel pretty comfortable just doing it with this quick and easy block. This cut, this slot is pretty deep, so uh, I'm just taking pretty small passes. Um, the I probably should have used uh, a smaller clamp or angled the clamp over more to give the bit more clearance so that it wouldn't have to stick out too much. But um, it's a quarter inch carbide bit and I didn't have too much chatter, so not that big an issue. Uh, this next part here um, sort of uh, illustrates the danger of using a brush to remove chips while the tool is still spinning. So be careful of that in the future. Um, finish pass to clean things up and that part's done. Uh, the next step here is to drill the hole for the bolt that will clamp the blade in place. Uh, I guess it's kind of a no-no to use an end mill in a drill truck, but um, doesn't felt safe enough here because it's a brand new end mill, super sharp, um, so hopefully not too much side load. Uh, this here is one of my favorite tools, um, a spring-loaded tap guide. Makes it super easy to keep the tap straight uh, when tapping holes. Um, on the mill. Uh, for the next step here, I made another simple wooden jig, um, basically a V block. Um, I guess the precision of this is a little bit more important, but seems accurate enough. Um, this is for cutting the groove on the bottom of the plane that is going to guide the plane along the edge of whatever material I'm putting a round over on. Yeah, 
And that concludes all of the uh, functional features um, that need to be machined. Um, these two holes that I'm cutting here, uh, their main purpose is to make the plane a lot lighter, uh, more comfortable to hold. But also from using it, I just found out it's a pretty comfortable way to hold the plane as well. And uh, you can see here that maybe, maybe in a future video or just later down the line, I'll come up with a better way of clearing chips while it's cutting. The location of those holes ended up being a little bit long, so here I am just trimming it to length. My bandsaw is a little bit slow, so that's definitely the fastest way to, to trim, just take that much material off. Um, and finally, uh, I decided to face both sides of it to um, make, make the plane a little bit narrower and also just shinier. And that concludes all of the machining, um, which means that there's a lot of deburring and filing left. Okay, um, this sort of starts the like hand shaping portion of making this plane. Um, obviously having the ends rounded is gonna be pretty key to making it comfortable to push. Uh, I find that just hand sanding this kind of stuff is um, pretty fast and effective. Aluminum is also surprisingly soft, so um, I'm often kind of surprised how quickly things go, even just sanding by hand with sandpaper. Um, and the last step here is to use a file to round a whole bunch of edges. I don't really want all the edges to melt away, but I definitely don't want the edges to um, dig into uh, the wood in a, in a way that would leave marks I don't want. And of course, just to make it all pretty, um, a little bit of steel wool. Uh, now to the blade. So for the blade, I'm uh, marking it here with Sharpie and razor blade. Uh, the blade itself is a quarter inch um, high speed steel bit that would be used uh, usually on a lathe. Um, this one is a leftover one that was used on a lathe, which is why it has a funny shape ground into it already. Uh, so, you know, I have to grind that off. And in between, um, I'm dipping the bit in water to keep it cool so that it stays uh, hardened. Uh, the last step here is just to clean up all the bevels on some diamond um, sharpening stones. And I'm pretty happy with how that came out. Okay, now we're ready for a uh, first cut. After playing with the plane a bit, uh, I discovered that pulling is my preferred way of using it. I find that I can do kind of a couple rough passes and then one final one um, to finish off the, uh, the cut. And overall, I'm really pleased with the result. Uh, from rubbing on the wood, the aluminum does leave a little bit of a black stain, but I'm hoping that'll go away or sand off really easily. 
And that's all. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.